Karna, could you please explain the significance of this corner of your restaurant, Tandoori in Tel Aviv? Okay. Um, Tandoori Tel Aviv is already 40 years old and it was opened by Vinod and myself. And um, at that time, yeah, Israelis would not touch Indian food with a pole. They didn't know what is, yeah, Indian food was all about. But uh, um, slowly, slowly, we introduced the food to the Israelis and uh, after that, all the backpackers started going to India, I think. Mm -hmm. But the significance of this table is the first um, date of Prime Minister Netanyahu and his wife, Sarah Netanyahu, was on this very table. It's table number eight. Mm -hmm. When they first met uh, on the aircraft and and I knew about it, but we didn't, uh, we didn't tell anybody about it. But when Prime Minister Modi visited Israel, so he said, well, at the dinner, firstly, at their residence, he said um, to Modi ji, he says, I would like to put you on to a secret that my first date was in Tandoori Tel Aviv, yeah. along with Sarah. And he says, if the date was so successful, we got married and we have two lovely children. So he said, I invited Rina Pushkarna mm. and her chefs so to make that magical evening again with India. That means the relationship between India and Israel um, yeah. should be a relationship like his own uh, mm. his, his own marriage. That was, and then another incident that took place on this very table was um, a lunch um, hosted by uh, then Mr. Ted Lanson. Yeah, yes. UN. Um, the uh, representative from uh, Norway. Norway, United Nations. And the first times that uh, the, the we were told that we yes, came to know about it only later on, but Yossi the first Bellin. time that Yossi Bellin, the minister of uh, political uh, affairs here, uh, with Mr. Ted Larsen, the, the Norwegians and the Palestinians, very prominent Palestinian uh, um, uh, ministers, all had a meeting, had lunch over here. And they selected this restaurant because they thought nobody would would try to our people are not inquisitive to find out what's going on. Mm. So, so basically, the first the first time Oslo that Oslo, Oslo starts. started was here. Before they moved on to the American Colony Hotel in Jerusalem, and from there to Oslo, and we came to know about it only when they showed that famous handshake between uh, Prime Minister Rabin and uh, Mr. Arafat, Chairman Arafat that they said uh, with uh, Bill Clinton and they said we'll take you now back to where it all started and that's the time they zoomed in on Tandoori Tel Aviv mm. and I think that's the time we came to know about it. <laughs> so now um, and, they say, and then even the European newspapers also um, uh, quoted saying that peace talks heated up over hot curry and that the Indians had a, had a you know um, a role to play in this but actually mm. it was no politics it was all food yeah. and um, I, I remember that's after that um, Mr. Bellin dedicated a whole uh, page to us Yossi Bellin in his book saying that how he chose this restaurant and how uh, at 3 30 already we close so he said don't worry Rina's, Rina will not say anything <laughs> uh, we'll continue our talks and they continued I think till 4 30 or 5 and that's the magic happened here on this very table. I hope it happens again. Yeah. Yeah. So ma'am, you are also on the advisory council of the India-Israel Asia Centre, which is right. a cultural body. That's right. That's so right. given Netanyahu and Modi's personal friendship, how do you see India-Israel ties going forward? I see it going forward in leaps and bounds. I saw the chemistry between them uh, when Prime Minister Netanyahu visited uh, India and also when Modi ji visited Israel. Um, it's a personal relationship between them that it's I think it's more trust that works around and uh, and um, for the betterment of both people Indians and Israelis mm. and uh, and knowing their the, the way that Modi ji works that you know like when he came here it was him coming to see his friends here mm. and he had made a special trip after that from Dubai was it to the Palestinian Authority? Yeah. Yeah. And that's also, I didn't go across, but I sent my chefs across to, <laughs> to because we knew exactly how he likes his chai, Adrak ki chai, oh. and how he likes his uh, moong dal khichdi. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's a, it's a lot of 
politics happening in the background mm -hmm. but it's over food and uh, we are very honored it's over indian food which exactly. both prime ministers like so mm -hmm. you represent that in hindi but things, what kind of food benjamin likes like what what he orders what are his favorites okay uh, mr nathan yao just now we had a, a take away go to to the to the prime minister's office because uh, the the likud uh, office is right here so lunch is today mm. we are lucky prime minister is having tandoori chicken today for lunch <laughs> but uh, they they ordered uh, with uh, with their uh, vault people and they've come and fetched it already but um, a, he loves tandoori chicken he likes everything which is grilled mm -hmm. but he 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 loves the butter chicken sauce which we make him in tikka masala style because of the kosher restrictions right uh, no cream and no butter uh -huh. and uh, also um he eats no a day the whole family actually doesn't like uh, coriander green coriander mm. which we indians put a lot on our food so green coriander mm -hmm. is a taboo I in see. the netanyahu household mm -hmm. and my last question to you is you know you are in touch with the 85000 strong yes. indian community yes. here uh how do you think they approached these elections or how do you think what was the yes, sense in that in the indian community when it came to the recent election well my my uh, my request to this gov to this government who is coming into power now is have one indian representative in knesset hmm. if the ethiopians can reach there even after coming after the indians and the and the russians i mean immigrants can reach there I'm I'm very sure that one of our uh, Indians, yeah. not me. I'm not interested in <laughs> politics. Why not you? But no, no. I was offered, by the way, but no. Mm -hmm. um, we have very, very uh, well educated uh, Indian community here. Yes. Who are in different spheres of uh, of uh, of uh, their professions over here, and uh, who are good candidates to represent the community. Mm. And uh, my my request and my endeavor would be. that prime minister choose one person to to head uh, to 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 represent the indian community in in kinesis this time yeah and you also mentioning that the uh, 85000 indians who live in israel uh, you voted right wing yes, yes. all the 85 there are 85000 indian families over here hmm. and that's at least two seats in parliament so um during uh, during the campaign i um, hosted quite a lot of indians uh, from the community in my restaurant in hatsilia uh, and invited uh, different ministers from the likud to come and speak to them and uh, tell them what it would be uh, for the relationship between the countries how in uh, india would play an important role as well hmm. so um 85% again or 80% of the indians voted right wing likud hmm and they are all very fond of prime minister nathaniel and when i tell people that i was witness to 250000 indians standing and welcoming prime minister nathaniel in new delhi people are really shocked over here hmm. but that's exactly what happened and i think they're looking forward to that again mm -hmm. and i was promised by mrs sara nathaniel that She's going to invite me again to join them on the trip to India. Great. Thank you so much, ma'am, for yeah. speaking to the print as well. Thank you.